Yo, what up? Guys, HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. So you can what? save money. Yeah, that's right, Steve. So you could save money on dinner and put it toward your holiday shopping. Get 65% off plus free shipping with code ValleyCast65 at HelloFresh.com slash ValleyCast65. One more time. 65% off plus free shipping with code ValleyCast65 at HelloFresh.com slash ValleyCast65. Let's do it! What? Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with your uh, uh, show. Man, that that there, that there was a cold open, baby. That was nice. Nice work, man. That made you me hot it. and ready. That's hot and ready like Little Caesars. Uh, uh. Dude, by the way. Little Caesars Hot and Ready is the best deal in Ugh. fast food hands. You really think down. so? For a family man? Yeah, man. I can go get I can get me a full-on pepperoni pizza and some Italian cheesy stick bread for like 11 bucks and it feeds the fit like it feeds who was going to eat it in my place for days. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for days? Oh yeah, I'll have a slice, Jackson will have a slice or two and then it's like boom, you get pizza in your lunch for the next 3 days. It's you only get best. one large pizza. Yeah. Well, my daughter can't eat that. That's okay, so that that cut so that cuts Hayden now. And Heather's like a bird. Heather's like a bird. Like a bird. She barely <laughs> eats the pizza. <laughs> she takes uh, a little nibble here and there. <laughs> She's she doesn't get it in her hair. <laughs> uh, she, so, but yeah, dude, but that's the thing. It's 11, it's, it's, if I don't get the cheesy sticks, it's like six bucks for a pizza. You get it right away. You can't go to McDonald's anymore. A family cannot go to McDonald's anymore without spending 20 bucks. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. McDonald's, like McDonald's isn't cheap. Mm-mm. None of them are. No, no, fast food is just not cheap anymore. Like, remember when Taco Bell was like, you could spend six dollars and get like a king's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like, here's your goose. <laughs> yeah, here's your Christmas goose. <laughs> Eat, well, Taco Bell's probably what it goes. Little Caesars, and then Taco Bell's still not that. Expensive. I want to know actually. Let, let's do a little search here. Let's do a search for the best fast food. The best. Fast food deal. But also cheapest. <laughs> or wait, or wait, the best fast food deal. Okay. Or, deal or, or no deal. is that what we're talking about? I, we're asking for the best bang for your buck. The best fast bang food. for your buck. Because McDonald's, sorry, Mickey D's, you are, you have priced us out. <laughs> um. Yeah, this is maybe not the way to do this. How do we search? What's the way to search for this? The be the best, the cheapest fast food in the U.S. Yeah, but then that doesn't mean good, right? Well, but we can we can decide from there. We can par it out from there. Yeah, because you remember back in the day, it'd be like you'd go to fast food and you get your fast food for whatever a minimal amount of dollars, and you'd go to like a restaurant, quote unquote, and they'd be like, "Try our six dollar burger. It's the best. It's the." The juiciest, thickest, plumpest, grade triple A meat you'd ever have in your life. Fresh veggies, it's the best burger on the fucking planet, and it's six dollars. And now McDonald's is like, yo, you want our six dollar Big Mac? <laughs> Dude, that's really funny. Cause I do remember the the five dollar burger or the the mm -hmm. like uh, dude, isn't that crazy? That's like we're just two old men talking about prices from back in the day. Remember <laughs> when you could buy a bee's chugger for <laughs> only two pence? I love the idea of a burger being called a bee's chugger on a menu. <laughs> if that isn't something somewhere. There's the... Uh, the Come the, get your bee's chugger. No bee's chugger. <laughs> Dude, I, this it's crazy because... You know, when you're a kid, because what were we? Were we teenagers when the $5 burger, was it $6 burger or $5 I burger? remember like $6 burger. Maybe it was like the $6 burger. $9 burger, but it was always at like one of but, those like fancy sit-down restaurants, right? Well, but but that's what they were doing. They were doing the thing. They were marketing it like it was a restaurant burger that mm -hmm. you could get at a fast food place. Oh, that was all Jack, right? That was Jack in the Box doing that. No, I sure. think it was, I think it was, uh, 
uh, Carl's Jr. That okay, same thing. <laughs> Don't you dare! I I love I well. Yeah, I go yeah. I go I go a lot. I go back and forth a lot with my fast food places, but you know Taco Bell is king these days. I think because their food is just real good. Is this Christmas music? I guess kind of. All right, fast food out the window. This is totally you- joy. This is just joyful. All the nations give me their angels sing. What? What? Saint Christ <laughs> was born with a cleft palate. <laughs> Oh my God! There are people out there that think you just committed so much blasphemy. Because Jesus was born with a cleft palate. <laughs> um, not my, not my Jesus. Not my Jesus. My Jesus was born perfect. Twenty twenty vision. Big penis. Massive, massive dong. My Jesus had a big old dong. My Jesus had the best working kidneys. My Jesus there was a second. There was a second manger for his. Dong. My my Jesus died with his gallbladder intact. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, dude, so uh, okay, okay. Uh, we're losing our, our train of thought here. The six dollar burger. The sti- So the six dollar burger was a thing. We must have been teenagers. Hmm. And it was history and so, lessons. So could you? Would you say confidently as a teenager, Joe Beretta? Mm-hmm. It was hard for you to visualize the the the, uh, the 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 value of a dollar. You like you hadn't really had you had, by that point had you realized what money was and how you really really needed to be careful with it and and like what were your what was your relationship with money when that came out. My relationship with money at that age was I didn't have a relationship with money. Because right. We, we were very, very uh, uh, living under the means. Like we So were, that's we, what I'm saying. We were pretty poor. So like places like McDonald's were like our was, safe haven. Yeah. Because we could be like, oh, I'm a growing boy and I can get 17 cheeseburgers and only spend yeah. four bucks. This is great. My dad uh, would bring home KFC for the family to have dinner because there was like a he had a coupon that was like $10 for a whole bucket family meal or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you get the big old yeah. bucket and you get the biscuits and the. But it wasn't it. an always thing, right? Like it still felt like a little bit of a celebration. No, it always like, felt like a door. special thing. Yeah. So when the $6 burger thing happened, I remember thinking like, wow, that's a lot of money for a burger. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still think that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, but the thing is, is the marketing, the marketing, it was like, I feel like that was the beginning of fast food getting expensive. Yeah, I mean, I think the $6 really... burger started the whole, we can be, we can charge $6 for this shit. Well, guys. correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the $6 burger not $6? Like, that was the whole thing. It would be like, get the $6 burger for $4.99. Or I want to like find that. out. I want to do a deep dive into the Carl's Jr. $6 burger. Like, where's the, where's the, you know, like there's, um, uh, defunct land for Disneyland stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Where's the, where's the channel that does deep dives into like fast food stuff. The De- food land. Mm. <laughs> Dude, that's a great, uh, I like, uh, uh, <laughs> Um, I love so, this. Someone has the someone has the six dollar burger recipe, and says it costs less than two dollars to make your own six dollar it burger. It's, it's all about the margins, baby. Look, I I want I want to uh, also acknowledge my old man complaint here. Like when I if I go like and I'm secretly like I'm gonna treat myself. Screw you, family. And I go to like McDonald's by myself and I get that spicy chicken sandwich by oh, myself. Oh, yummy. Those places for like one one person, it's still more than we used to pay. But it's not like I don't like my mind isn't blown. I'm still walking yeah. away ten dollars lost usually. And but and we're as doing a family. The, yeah. It just it exponentially, exponentially gets up there, and mm-hmm. it's, that's a lot of money. And you know, uh, again, uh, old man family complaints. You, you go to the store with that same amount of money, and I. When there's not inflation yeah. problems, and I can bring home so many ingredients for a stew that'll last us like days, I know. and I'll make I... another stew. You know, 
and then I'll make it's, a Big Mac stew. <laughs> it, it, they've really they, they've really capitalized on convenient Big mm-hmm. Mac stew, and that's the point, right? Like, <laughs> honey, we're having time. Big Mac stew for dinner. Tonight. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Could you um, imagine? So okay, so it says here it was two thousand one when Carl's Jr. introduced the six dollar six dollar burger. burger. Yeah, yeah, I um, remember that. And it says uh, that it was supposed to be like you were getting a restaurant style burger. Um, It says which uh, is a fun, which is a really fun acknowledgement by Carl's Jr. to go. We're not a restaurant, (laughs) dude. So you're right. I know. I know. But see, that was the thing. They took a big chance. Isn't it interesting that like, you know, dude, as Americans, we just we were absolutely guinea pigs for marketing and advertising in Still the United are. States from yeah. the 80s all the way to now. I mean, oh, yeah. certainly still now. Oh yeah. But imagine how we were there when they were like testing like every type of product possible before FCC and like, you know, all these regulations and shit came in. Like, you know, we were straight up like eating mercury probably when we were eating like original pop rocks and stuff. Dude, <laughs> like, I mean, we were... have you seen the documentary on the concept of essence? No, what the fuck? It, it was Did one the of those... Skeksis make it? So, uh, uh, I, I From the dark one. crystal? <laughs> I might have one here, but like... We so... like essence. Yes, so the Gerfling F- essence is the best. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. So like like the FDA, they're like, you, you know, back of uh, everything that you eat for the most part, you have to have the ingredients, you got to have the nutritional facts and all of that. Yes. Well, loopholes fucking everywhere in big business. And what there's certain things that companies don't have to divulge, like trade secrets and uh the <laughs> apparently the concept of essence you can say i'm putting essence into oh, this cleaner fuck. into this thing yeah. you don't have to say where it comes from because it can fall under trade secrets i forget Jesus what the documentary Christ. is but it's just like Dude, you know you don't know so much there's you don't so know. much <laughs> well i've told you that story about we're going way down this tangent hole but welcome back to tangent hole <laughs> <laughs> Mike died, and so we got a new show called Tangent Hole. <laughs> Episode one. <clears throat> How did the, Mike die? The tangent void. D- uh, but d- there, remember, I think I told you this. I was like at an airport. I've talked about this endlessly on the like the. You could find clips and clips and clips of this from the internet of me talking about this. I'm sure of it. But I was I was drinking like a Diet Coke or a Coke Zero or something at the airport like waiting to come home or fly somewhere or whatever. And this man started to talk to me, asked me how I was doing. He told me about how he worked in like the research lab, science lab part of Coca-Cola company. He's like, don't drink that. Dude, he said, if you're going to drink Coca-Cola, just drink the regular Coca-Cola. Don't get the diet stuff. Don't get the Coke Zero stuff. Because he's like, I just spent like, you know, 10 years of my life engineering these like sugars that we like created in the lab essentially uh you know so that we can Hashtag sell it to people coca covid <laughs> dude but it was like crazy to learn it was like a big moment for me because it was like crazy to learn that just you don't know about anything you're putting in your body ever no. No, and we don't. we're just trusting these corporations because you know what's fun? It sucks that we're trusting them now the way that we would trust Disneyland with our lives when we would go on these these like death rides and stuff. And you'd be like, well, Disneyland would never make a ride that would kill me. They'd get sued to oblivion. It's just it's not even trust. I think we're misusing the word trust. I think it's just. Like you said, we are such creatures of convenience now that and, we'd rather our take the gamble. <laughs> we don't even know it's a yeah. gamble. That's the thing. We weren't brought up like with the with the critical thinking of like our parents sitting down and being like, "Okay, we got you this McDonald's, and we got it because of the price and where we are financially right. within the the, uh, the 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 society's hierarchy." Right. And um, we need you to know that we don't know what's in this. Like nobody's doing that with anything. We wake yeah. up, we go, even going to the grocery store is the biggest fucking convenience that we don't realize. But you know, now I feel like now, 
you're older. Doesn't it feel like when in the 80s and 90s, we probably put so much fucking disgusting, bad shit into our bodies. And now, I, at least like, you know, I think the one benefit of the Karens that I that I can say. Hey, the Karens, you can't <laughs> spell Karen without, without care. care. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I will thank the, <laughs> the the one thing I'll thank the Karens of the world for is getting us to a point where they can't say that this is like a hundred percent beef anymore, or they can't say <laughs> you're eating taco meat, yeah, anymore. Like like Karen sued these companies into oblivion to the point where they have to do, they have to say everything except for this essence shit you're talking about but also nobody cares trade secrets that's so crazy dude dude go down that's that rabbit so hole crazy. and you'll just I be like i hate it i hate it it's like the 11 herbs and spices there's actually 12 <laughs> but it's a trade secret <laughs> and we don't have to tell you about any of them ha <laughs> They're not so, even spices. <laughs> so we were with the six dollar burger thing. They were basically like, dude, because we're thinking when in two thousand one, we're thinking I just want to jack off and watch Star Wars and play video games or yeah. you know sports or whatever it is that you yeah. were doing at the time. You don't care about anything outside of that, pretty much. And uh, and so when the, when you see a marketing campaign that's like the six dollar burger, ooh, we're making a six dollar burger. But you're right, dude. It wasn't six dollars. They just called it the six dollar burger because that's how much burgers were at restaurants in two thousand one. Yep. And now that's how much they are at the fucking fast food places. Exactly. And you're not gonna your six dollar burger at a restaurant. What's the average now? Twelve. You're probably yeah, looking at a twelve yeah. dollar. Twelve and, seems and, to and, be. And a twelve dollar burger may not even come with fries. Bullshit. 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 But like the Carl's it. Jr. six dollar burger debuted at three dollars and ninety five cents. <laughs> God dang it! I if I could go back and appreciate the things that I know. I missed- that's what I'm saying. We didn't appreciate <laughs> it because we didn't understand. We didn't Ooh. understand, and now Ooh. we gladly pay six dollars for a burger. Um, it says, so, oh, "Yeah, go ahead." Go ahead. No, 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 no. No, well, I was gonna. Ha- mine was gonna be a conclusionary type statement, but we're still going. Keep going. Well, you should conclude it because I don't know where else we could go with this other than realizing. Inflation is a thing. The $6 inflation burger. <laughs> this burger will <laughs> this burger will never change except it'll get more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay. So uh in conclusion, uh Little Caesars 8 bucks. Six, oh, yeah, seven, I still seven have bucks. this brought up. The cheapest food restaurant brand in the US. I still, we still haven't, we still haven't, we still haven't. What is it? Del Taco? It says, well. Of the taco? This is, this is just saying cheapest fast food items. Nah, that's not what we need. No, no one has this. That's not what we, I have two things. I wish someone would just have a thing that was like the best deals. Like the (laughs) best, like where can you get the most, well, I'm just gonna try, where can you get the most bang for your buck? You keep searching that, I'll make my final point on this tangent that we found, this rabbit hole, this tangent hole we found our our, our way down. You were talking about how we were this like experimentation, like we were the mice for advertising back yeah, then. Yeah, we were totally the guinea pigs. We all, all still are, shit. and honestly now, Steve, we're actually part of the problem because, because when we were kids, it did, it infiltrated our existence uh, in a lot of, um, let's say even harmful uh, ways, but he's usually like where we really got hit was Saturday morning. We got up. Our parents weren't watching TV car- cartoons with us. We would watch our cartoons. I know. They'd they slam left us, us alone. They, they would us slam alone. us with gusher commercials <laughs> and, and toys and all Dude. this other stuff that we would turn around and like, oh, but, and it, but it was all psychological, too, because you'd see the kids that were like, these kids aren't having fun. Yeah, these <laughs> kids are having fun. And why are they having fun? Because they have this thing you want. You're. <laughs> You're in black and white. Little Jimmy's head just exploded with fruit juices because he ate a fucking gusher. Yeah, you want to stay black and white? Then don't eat gushers. But you want your still smiling. You want your head to explode like a fucking pimple. So super soakers, 
slip and slides, like all that stuff was Everyone, being like, for some reason, marketing wanted people to explode. Exactly. Like, you're having explode. so much fun that you're going to not exist. Dude, remember Which is what we all game? want, existentially. We never asked for this existence. This gusher will end you. This gusher, dude, this gusher will kill you in the coolest way. <laughs> Dude, but it's funny because remember the, because this is in line with what you're talking about. Remember the honeycomb, I've talked about this. Remember the honeycomb monster guy? Yep. yep. <laughs> he was literally like a manic, insane. He, he was a sugar monster. Danger. <laughs> He was Dude, a dangerous monster. The that fucking was like, Kool-Aid man would break like, down your wall. I want I now. And it's like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> give me that fucking honeycomb. He's like ripping his face off. <laughs> exactly. Kool-Aid man. And then you're sitting there. The wall and you'd be yeah. like, yeah. Kool-Aid man, thank you for, that's yeah. like, that's tens of thousands of dollars of work. That my family has to do to make the fucking fix that my wall. My poor dad has to fix this. <laughs> but I got my Kool Aid. I got Dude, my sugar. Juice. It's so funny. I love that we're seeing these screaming things at us, and we're just like looking at the TV like this, like mm -hmm. waiting for Garfield and Friends to come back on. <laughs> Always right, being slightly like... disappointed with the Friends <laughs> portion of the programming. Right, and then Garfield and Friends would come back on, and then Garfield would be like, mm, "I love these gushers. I wish I had them every day." <laughs> Lasagna on Monday, gushers, gushers every other Tuesday. day. <laughs> Point. But I just okay. love it. I love that, like, that's how it stuff was advertised to us for decades. And then suddenly some parent sat down and watched the block of programming and was like, uh oh. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, final point that I want to make on this, though, is that's how it infiltrated our lives. And there, there was a separation of of the entertainment programming you were watching and the commercial programming you were watching slightly and, slightly i mean some would contend that fucking transformers the cartoon was just was a a, just a toy commercial and i get that <laughs> yeah. but today and this is where i say we're kind of the problem advertisers have infiltrated even more because us fucking youtubers and online people doing podcast stuff like that it's in the programming now and it's yeah. they're asking for it in the middle jackson will sit down and watch some get loud screamy youtuber and in the middle of it is a 40 second endorsement not even yeah. a commercial endorsement of like hey i fucking love these vitamins yeah Take them. you want to drink this g fuel it'll make right. you come hard right. So now the, the 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 entertainment and the marketing is is smashed together. And again, we've done it. We've done it. Yeah, but Everybody's we're but we were just we were just following the path. Like, but we still we still help but, pave it. But we're know? products of the the overall machine that pushed us into this marketing biome, capitalism, if you will, called capitalism. Yep. So and I think it's worse is what I'm saying. Is but that, I think it, we but but like I know I know that there's like there's the feeling that even for you, Joe, from way early YouTube stuff that you were like you were um, uh, uh, exposing or you were part of this like machine of like new marketing because like this is where YouTube ended up being TV for people and TV for us was a marketing machine oh yeah for sure i mean everything but, is at the end but of the day. but it's an inescapable thing capitalism it's an inescapable it's inescapable in if you want to live comfortably in the u.s oh for sure well, and I enjoy mean, the fruits of the labors of the united states now but but the point i'm trying to make is this joe is and we'll use transformers as the example here because I truly, more than meets the eye. I believe this. <laughs> I believe that they are more than meets the eye. And that's a really good <laughs> point to make because, because even today, we have essentially big toy commercials with Marvel movies and Star Wars movies oh, yeah. and Pixar movies. Oh, yeah. And what you what you're seeing is is and a, a marriage story. Huge <laughs> 
<laughs> the marriage story, the marriage story, uh, real time strategy game that came. What out is the marriage <laughs> story? Kids playing with the the action figures. You know when they're having imaginations, yeah. like, yeah. oh, you you haven't loved me for years. I can't do this anymore. You're There's like aggressive natures. <laughs> punch through drywall feature. <laughs> Press it, press the pull back. Uh, what's the name of the guy that played it? The, uh, the Adam, Adam, yeah, Driver. pull back Adam Driver's arm and watch his hand go through the drywall <laughs> during an <laughs> argument. And now oh. with passive aggressive pull string, <laughs> <laughs> um, and tears come out of uh Scarlett Johansson's oh. eyes. Is that who she yeah. is? That who it was? It was Scarlett think, Johansson, it was. I haven't watched it because I don't want to be sad. I watched it and I was like, man, they keep got they keep making these movies. <laughs> They keep making these movies where every there's so many of them that are like, here's what marriage is like. And it's just arguments and cheating and deception and shit. Um, anyway, so here's the point I'm trying to make. We still have these things and we are a part of these things, Joe. We do oh, sell yeah. things while we do our shows. Oh, yeah. But I think there's a difference between... <sighs> This is this is why I love movies and TV shows and pop culture. They they programmed it into my brain, but they were following these established rules. They were like we're going to sell products. This Transformers is 100% a show that only exists to sell products, okay? Mm -hmm. But that show still needs to be watchable. Mm -hmm. And that show still needs to kind of work because you can't just make a cartoon commercial and have it be shitty because then people will just turn it off and be like, well, I don't I don't want that. So they required people that knew how to write good stories and knew how to create nuanced characters and made. And so there was still like an artistic aspect sure. of it. I don't think underneath the capitalistic right regime. And so what I'm trying to say is, is that even today we have these things that are commercials that are selling us toys and shit, but there's still like really cool people behind the scenes of that, that are making it good. That are like, we know that we're playing a game here, except we for know on we are the Valley cast, just garbage people. <laughs> yeah, garbage exactly. People. The, the point is, Steven, I think you're right. Like nothing. It's all gray. Nothing is going to be is 100 evil nothing's going to be 100 no. good there's a lot of in between and motivations what we could potentially be lacking and this is a bigger conversation for another day probably is just like the critical thinking the ability to ask why the ability to see the difference the ability can, to and just, be okay yeah. with it but like to, you know what i mean and fun again now final final point on what we're talking about with my bringing up the like how it's a little grosser these days with the way it's being done yeah i will will also say I do think our youth, from what I can tell, they also s realize that it is bullshit a little bit because it, instead it used to be like, oh, you're selling out. And it's not that anymore. Now it's like, oh, get your bag, dude. That's cool. We don't care. We're not going to click on the link. There Whatever. is a support. There is like, yeah, because you know? it because that's all from when we were like um, – <sighs> The whole like work, 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 work yourself until you die, like thing that was happening, like work until you fucking can't breathe anymore. Until and your head explodes. Gushers. And that, yeah. And now it's like, well, work until you need a break and then take a break. Like it's all part of that, like understanding the human condition aspect of the of the zeitgeist that's happening right. where we're like, we at least understand that you're right. It's not a sellout thing anymore, unless it's like completely a departure from something that you've, you believe in and advertise, mm -hmm. have advertised before. Now it's like, we get it. Get that bag, baby. We get yeah. it. Now I will last, last, last thing on that is that I, the, I, I stand by the point I made. I do still think it's, it's when your critical thinking gets a little better. So I think like high school age people see it. But when Jackson watches a YouTube video and that 
any of those screamy loud video game people say they like something, say they did something, product, uh, whether it's a story about their lives that they're fabricating or is truth, they still take it as gospel. And I ha and it's up yeah. to me to tell Jackson. I'm like, yo, dude, uh, the only yeah. reason he's saying that is because he's getting paid and you need to know that. The only re you think you know this guy that is being all yeah. nice and screamy and you think is a good dad, but you don't know him. You're only seeing what he's choosing to show you. And he doesn't get that yet, but it's up to us to help them get there. It, dude, yeah. Isn't that crazy that it's like, the hope is is that that understanding be becomes clear. Right, eventually. and we all think like that Like you can get will. opinions from more than one place, mm -hmm. essentially. So active, <laughs> active engagement in the things that you watch and enjoy and being yeah. critical and again from my college professor back in the day always ask why always Dude, i think it is why. just critical thinking i think it's critical thinking it's just like because for me it was like i'd watch a movie and i and then i would like watch it over and over and over again and then i'd grow up and be like why did i watch that over and over again and then I'd be like, oh, because the people that made it worked on Muppet shit or made this other thing. And I love that other thing. And this writer is like always writes about these really cool, fantastical things. And I love fantastical things. And then you like you learn that there's a world outside of the you know, you just remove the blinders. Mm -hmm. and you're like, whoa, wait, I like this because because I'm addicted to it because they 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 brainwashed me. <laughs> Gushers, gushers, gushers. gushers. <laughs> All right. I got three three things I want to bring up. Okay, you. and then I have two things. Is one of your things one of my things, you think? Probably not. Okay, so wait, foreshadowing. Wait, oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Can we let's save it for the end? Yeah. Foreshadowing. We're gonna talk yeah, about the I know, weird album. I know, movie. yeah. We're gonna talk about the weird album. We're gonna talk sure. about the weird album. But there's two other things I want to talk to you about real, real quick. I got my mind blown in the car a couple days ago listening to Spotify. Roadhead? <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Listening to Spotify with my daughter. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and and we're listening to the 60s Gold channel because she's uh, her her musical tastes have expanded. And I love great. that. I but love she loves that. the 60s. She loves uh, 70s. She loves 80s butt rock, which I really yeah. think is great. Yeah. And she's like, what's butt rock? I'm like, this is butt rock. Um, so... Listen to the 60s gold. And then this song comes on. And I'm like, I've never heard this before, but it sounds so fucking familiar. And then uh uh I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. This is a cover? This is a cover? And I start freaking out. And Hayden's like, what? What? I'm like, Tiffany oh, did not sing this song. So you're Tiffany hearing, I think we're alone now. I think we're alone now. I had By Bobby no and the four tops or whatever, yeah, Bobby Shane uh, or whatever. Yeah, I didn't know it was a cover. You knew it was a cover? Oh, I had yeah. no clue. No clue. Dude. I think And it's better. It's better. <laughs> it's so much better. Dude, I went down a fucking crazy rabbit hole just like that with Spotify. I was like, give me all these 60s songs I've never heard. I want 50s and 60s songs I've never heard. And you would you would lose your mind with how many songs that were written in the 50s and 60s became hit 80s songs so i've got a list right here i'm just no gonna you do it. i'm just gonna read it down i haven't even read it yet and these are I, all covers is what you're these saying. are covers i what i, I looked up i just, like this I, I googled what are covers that we didn't realize were covers yeah ready i'm just top gonna go 10 down. songs that'll tell blow me, your mind that are a cover you could tell me if you knew it or not all right okay okay uh, Cindy Lauper, one of the greatest musical minds of the '80s, uh, insane creative person. Girls just want to have fun. Cover. Wow, I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. It was first done by musician Robert Hazard, a hot name in the Philadelphia club scene during the '80s. And he's an incel. <laughs> <laughs> Famous incel. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, Blinded by the light. Oh wow! Really? This says we all know Manfred Mann's Earth Band for getting us revved up like a deuce, but the revved first up like a deuce. The first runner in the night was actually Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> That's very good writing. Did you write this? No. But this is it like says, a movie movie game prompt. <laughs> did you hear who it was? Wait, say again. Bruce Springsteen. Whoa. Bruce Springsteen. Blinded uh, by the light. Did you know that Red Red Wine was a cover? Uh maybe. That's a Neil Diamond song. 
Wow. UB40. Dude. Let's see here. Uh, People made entire careers off of just covering someone else's song and then going off to do their own shit after that. Do you know uh, what Joan Jett's biggest jam was? Is it Heartbreaker? No. no, wait, 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 Joan Jett. Oh, I love rock and roll. Yeah, that's what she's known for. But did you know the Arrows wrote it seven years Whoa. earlier? Oh, <laughs> this blows my mind too. Holy shit! Okay. okay, Steve, who wrote Mambo Number Five? Well, is that Lou Bega? No, he covered it. <laughs> wow, who wrote it? Is it the, the who who? In 1949, Perez Prado. Oh, hold on. Provided the skeleton for Bega. So maybe Bega changed it a little bit, but somebody he was based off of somebody else. The original song is more like a little bit of syphilis from my friend, <laughs> a little bit of typhoid from my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. Tainted Love, Soft Cell, Cover. Yeah. <sighs> Let me keep going. I, I feel like I maybe knew that. Uh, Hound Dog, Elvis Presley, cover. Most of Elvis's songs are covers, I thought. I Will Always Love You, we knew that was a cover. Mm -hmm. Killing, Killing Me Softly, we knew that was a cover. Yeah. Uh, um, the Beatles covered Twist and Shout. Yeah, Beatles did that. a lot of covers in their mm -hmm. early days. Um, Let's see here, let's see here, let's see here. Dude, that's so crazy. Dude, Mickey by Tony Basil's a cover. Yeah, <laughs> man. Uh, Ray of Light by Madonna's a cover? Hold on. No a way. It was far more tame thanks to the folks. I guess, yeah, it was a little bit of a cover. Anyways, there's so freaking many. And like you said, a lot of them in the 80s. Uh, Venus by Bana Bananarama. <laughs> the one that's like, I'm your Venus. I'm yep. your fire. What's your desire? Actually written by Dutch rock outfit Shocking Blue. Whoa. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. That's crazy. I, I, I'm I, actually surprised you didn't know about the I Think We're Alone Now. I had no clue. Especially since the Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane used the original. I might have thought that was just trailer. like a like they were just being. Oh, they creative, were doing like a new. Yeah, a, a new cover. Yeah, dude. Wow. Um, Natalie and Bruglia's Torn, also a cover. Whoa, what? Pulling from Los, Los Angeles rock band Ed, Edna Swap. Huh. It was a it was a slow builder full of distorted guitars. Achy Damn. Breaky Heart was a cover, <laughs> dude. I wanna I wanna I want an album of all original versions of of popular songs from like way back in the day. Yeah, like maybe I should make a playlist or something. So the the uh, the fun like for me musical journey of I think we're alone now is Weird Al. <laughs> I, I had that. Yeah, I had the Tiffany version stuck in my head forever. But now I know there was this pre Tiffany, which I would contend is <clears throat> superior. But then you go to the Tiffany version. You're like, this is a fun little 80s. Bop. It's a little pop song. And then you hear Weird Al's. I think we're a clone now. Yeah. And it, a, it's Weird Al and it's funny and it's hilarious and, and all that. However, it is an example. I've talked about this before of how fucking good weird al and his band were at music they're, dude they're so good it is good. a superior music just musically track. yeah it's, they improved on it it's so much more fun to listen to it sounds bad it's so good yeah so. it's a real good band man weird mm -hmm. al's like he's got he's good yeah he's so good yep um which we'll talk about in a little bit <laughs> i guess we'll talk about it in a little bit yeah i wanted to okay let me run down really quick the cheapest fast foods the get the the fast food chains that give you the most bang for your buck according Please. to fastfoodmenuprices.com <laughs> reputable source it says taco bell taco bell is the leading i can see that it says for 3.99 you can get their fully packed grilled stuffed beef burrito and you can couple it with their cheesy nachos, which cost only 89 cents. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, that's what it says. Damn. And then McDonald's is next. Don't believe it. No way. It says McDonald's is next. Then Smash Burger. Never had that. Wendy's. Panda. Arby's. KFC. And Burger King. Feel like this is dated. I refuse to believe any of it. Yeah, maybe, huh? Let me see. Let me find out what year this is from. I refuse. 
2003. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But okay. And then I got one more thing to share with you, and then we can end with Weird Al. Um, so have you heard of these glasses that supposedly stop you from having motion sickness? No. You haven't heard of these? Mm-mm. Okay. I've heard about these for a while. And I usually don't, I usually don't think too much about them, but I've always gotten motion sickness in cars if I'm not driving. Well, you're one of them. And I, yeah, I hate it. And I, and I'm one of those that like, if I'm on a boat, I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't do it. I can't be on a boat. So I don't, I don't, I get very motion sick very easily. So I was like looking into these glasses that supposedly cure motion sickness okay okay and so this is this is what they look like i can't tell if we're joking here no this is real okay this is real dude these are real glasses i'm just glad somebody finally is acknowledging our side eyes (laughs) so here let me show you this this is like dr octopus okay okay glasses okay so the ones on the left and right are for your peripherals peripheral so what what you're seeing is is you're seeing this liquid right you see this liquid yes in here so it's supposed to replicate the horizon line that follows your movements okay so if i turn my head this way the horizon will go that way if i turn my head this way the horizon goes that way but the horizon doesn't shake <laughs> right but it's supposed to be interesting you're supposed to ignore it it's supposed to be for your peripheral okay. it's supposed to be like you just ignore it and after a while your brain gets used to like your own horizon line do you find yourself ignoring it after wearing them for a while well i haven't actually tried them in the field yet man but i got them because they were they were cheap and i was like you know my friends were talking about going on a boat and uh doing boat stuff soon and i'm like man maybe it's time for me to just figure out how boat stuff will work for me <laughs> and uh you know maybe this will work i'll 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 report on it but look at how ridiculous this is yeah it it, it seems it's... like a joke from a like a leslie nielsen movie right hi i'm here to find the microfilm man like you looking like you being able to ignore and the the wiggle of the liquid which if you're just listening to this steve's got glasses on his head there are four circles two go over the eyes and then there's two similar size circles that go on the side of the head where the like the 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 what the hell what that the the rims of the glasses the the <laughs> what do you the, put over the your arms ears? the arms of the glasses yeah there are all, two similar circles where y- your peripheral will be uh, they are filled with dark liquid, so the bottom half of the circle is dark, and the top half of the circles are kind of translucent. But They're the liquid, yeah. the liquid moves with every single one of Steve's yeah. uh, movements. So that's that's kind of what I'm trying to describe here. Now, for Steve, if he can get to the point where he's ignoring the movement and can look past it, that's amazing because anybody that looks at you will never take you seriously in any way, shape. Or I form. know. I'll be like, <laughs> can you tell me where the entertainment stages on this cruise oh my goodness i'm professor fart (laughs) it's so (laughs) weird i'm fascinated i hope they work i'm fascinated too i hope it works i'll let you know i haven't like i said i haven't taken them out into the field yet but yeah look at this it's like (laughs) it's like a bunch of glasses yeah if you picked that up if you picked that up and just held out those four circles with two long arms on them you'd go these aren't glasses what are these Right. I think these are something that are anything but glasses. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to anything but glasses. Holy yeah, crap. Yeah, so I'll let you know. I'll let you know how these work out. But and I've heard for I've heard some people say that uh they don't work for them. Uh, but I've heard some people say that they swear by them. So very interesting. We'll see. We'll I wonder see. if you could wear them on like the Harry Potter ride at Universal. I know, and maybe it would help. I don't or some kind or yeah, maybe even like Star Tours or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But okay, so Shall we end on the Weird Al movie? Yes, I watched it last night and this morning. 
Oh, you watched it twice, or you no, finished fell, it this morning? I fell asleep. Oh, you fell asleep. asleep. <laughs> and that uh, is not a, that is not a me um, uh, giving any kind of criticism. I was no, just you were just really a sleepy tired. boy. I was really tired. I enjoyed it. I thought it was silly and fun. I enjoyed it. I thought it was silly and fun. And you know, me and Owen and Matt were hanging out last night, and we were talking about. Owen Wilson and Matt Damon. Oh, Owen really wanted to talk. Owen Wilson and Matt Damon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Wilson and Matt Damon and I were talking about it. They really wanted to like talk about it. And I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it yet. Like I need another viewing because like, dude, you and I are huge Weird Al fans. Oh yeah. And I've collected his works for decades mm -hmm. and um, I'm obsessed. Uh, I definitely was obsessed for for a long time with Weird Al, so uh, so I have like a a very deep love for like all things Weird Al, all things W A, like forever a deep love, and yep. so um I was like I don't know I don't I went in with zero expectations I was mm -hmm. like I, this looks already bonkers so I I can't wait it's on so, Roku <laughs> it's on Roku the most inaccessible way to get a movie out I feel yeah. like yeah <laughs> but um I watched it and I really enjoyed it and then I was like well the boys were asking me about it I was like I just don't know if I'm ready with my final opinion. But since they were like forcing a conversation about it, I, I, I came to a conclusion that might be controversial. Okay. This is a hot take, Joe. Okay. I appreciate but, that. But I need to, but I'm going to watch it more and I'm going to mm -hmm. get, I'm going to gather these feelings uh, and, and, and be more concise about it. But I'm going to say a very hot take about it. Please. I don't know if Daniel Ratcliffe was the best choice. I don't know if that's to a play hot, Weird Al. Hot take. I think that's probably a normal take. I personally kind of enjoyed him as Weird Al because nothing about the flick was in any way, shape, or form trying to make anybody look like the people they were portraying. Everybody was a dollar store version, except for Rain Wilson. I just dis yeah, I person, disagree. The person that they're portraying. It was a funnier die sketch with a more of a budget, dude. Like that's all it was. I okay. I I disagree with the performances thing. I think everyone is doing a fun version of the character they're portraying except I agree. for daniel radcliffe i think he was ordered to not do a fun silly version he was supposed to be overly dramatic with it so i think he wasn't supposed to like be funny i think he was supposed to act kind of real while everybody else was supposed to act a little kind of like which which brings wacky. me to my hotter take which is i don't know if daniel radcliffe is a good dramatic actor oh interesting I think Daniel Radcliffe is a I appreciate his career arc. I think Me too. Could, I love him. I think he's great. I do. But I'm just but you know cuz I went down all of the things that you just said about mm -hmm. it. I was like maybe they just wanted him to play completely different from Weird Al. Yes, in for real sure. life. But everyone else is doing like a fun character. They're at least like the real person they're portraying except for Daniel Radcliffe. So I was like, okay, maybe that was the choice. The choice was Daniel Radcliffe plays it like a action dramatic, whatever mm -hmm. person. And I was like, okay, so in order for that to work, the person who's doing that needs to be really a really good dramatic actor. Like for instance, Leslie Nielsen, Leslie Nielsen is the perfect example, I think, of someone who is in a comedy playing a serious, dramatic character mm -hmm. that is done, like, perfectly. Like, if you watch Airplane, everyone's a goofy motherfucker, except for Leslie Nielsen. He's, like, in a different movie completely. He's and dry. if that's what they were going for with the Weird Al movie, like, we want Daniel Radcliffe to seem like he's in a completely different movie than everybody else, then I think it didn't work. 
Interesting. Um, I think I think Daniel Radcliffe was the least my least favorite aspect of the Weird Al movie. I can give you that. I will say his look really worked for me. Yeah, like, his look like, was fun. Yeah, the look and like was amazingly Weird Alish, yeah. even yeah. though it wasn't at the same time. Yeah. Um, like he looked like young Weird Al for sure. Yeah. So I look, man, I, I totally give you that. I get what you're saying. I guess my criticism can only go so far because the movie itself, the fact that funnier it's a cartoon. Die, it's like well, a the cartoon. Fact that yeah. Funnier Die came up. Yeah. At the beginning of it. Yeah. It felt like a throwback. This is such a weird thing to say. It felt like a throwback, like 15 years back to when funnier die was a thing and they were doing these right. like hey we're actually getting celebrities to come together to do for fun these, trailers and stuff to yeah do these small like sketches and productions but we're getting legitimate actors and actresses and people from the ucb yeah. world together <laughs> yeah. with, the, with no budget to just do things but we got a little budget from you from roku so it felt like a throwback to like 2010 yeah funnier die and it I totally only, did it totally and i'm only did. judging it off of that i wish that, but what it left me wanting is I, I actually do want to the, the I want to know the Weird Al story. I want to watch Dude, a documentary on it, Weird Al. It's crazy because this is the second thing he's put out that's a documentary or a biopic that is like a complete fabrication of his actual life. Like yeah. he keeps not doing a real biography mm -hmm. <laughs> keep, who knows because it's, it's boring it's weird <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah maybe I, I i do know that he went to like architecture school to become an architect and like mm -hmm. graduated with honors or something and was like the top of his class architect and mm -hmm. then was just like no i make music now and i'm a music funny guy but it's like there's there's like there was like nothing in the movie that was like real other than dr mm -hmm. demento kind of Doc being his demento. mentor yeah. a little bit but um, but dude, that party scene with all the like with Paul F. Tompkins as Gallagher, as Gallagher, dude, I died. <laughs> like that scene was made for me. I feel like because it's yeah. just all my favorite people playing all my favorite people. Basically. Well, and that was that that scene. Fucking itself. Yorma as Pee Wee. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Apparently he he flew from like wherever he was to the set to to play Pee Wee for free. Because Yorma's the shit. He just wanted to be Pee Wee in the Weird Al movie. <laughs> Dude, uh, that it's scene so is exactly what I'm talking about, though. Like, it's like peak like, funny or die. Peak like, funny or die. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, we look like them, but we're not yeah. really trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%. Which was crazy because Walk Hard, I think Walk Hard put the final nail in the coffin on making fun of biopics, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Walk Hard is a perfectly constructed comedy satire biopic and so like the weird al movie is doing a satire biopic also but they're like we need to stay as far the fuck away from walk hard as possible mm -hmm. and walk hard made a meal out of the people not looking like the people they are and going like we're the beatles like they kept like when fucking paul rudd and jack Black are, are the beatles they just keep saying they're the beatles and shit which is hilarious and i'm like as long as they don't do that as long as they stay away from mm -hmm. what made Walk Hard work so well, I'll be like really satisfied. And I feel like what they did was they just did a funny or die sketch and made it into a movie. Yeah. And I think that that's really fun. Mm -hmm. And the fact I that it's all about Weird Al is really, really fun. And, uh, but I just think Daniel Radcliffe may not have been the best final choice. He worked for me. I. Yeah. The I think the movie is again. It's fun. I found myself smiling a lot. Me like too. you know when you just sit and you just like have a grin on your face. Yeah, that, that's kind of like what I was <laughs> yeah, doing. Yeah, I wasn't like laughing out loud the whole time, but I had a grin on my face. Yeah, um, and I enjoyed that. My favorite part of the movie, hands down, one hundred percent, were his three roommate band members that were so supportive and loving <laughs> and the basic white motherfucking actors that yeah. you've ever seen in your life <laughs> yeah not standing out in any way shape no, or form they were no. just there but i 
love. I know it's not it's not like Bill Hader and like fucking uh, you know uh, or like Fred Armisen. Like they could have done like a bunch of funny comedians as his like bandmates or whatever. But and I think they are comedians. I think they're up and coming comedians. They were that great. We, I we haven't love seen them. and shit. But yeah, they were. They were just they they. If you know Weird Al and you know the band at all, they like perfectly played his band because they're just mm-hmm. like these really friendly art artist dudes. Uh, that's that what, just like love Weird Al, and that makes me want to go on. That's because uh, as much of a Weird Al fan I I am, I haven't went down the rabbit hole of like really f- trying to research how the band got together and who they are and what they do because they're all amazing musicians. Again, that take these sounds and then recreate them and make them better. I know, and, to them. and better, yeah. And uh, I need to, I need to deep dive on them because I don't even know their names. I should know their names. I've seen them in concert. I know I about know John names. Bermuda Schwartz because he's the one that had that Bermuda Triangle name. That like his like pseudonym was Bermuda. Mm-hmm. Um, but and they've but, been yeah. together forever too, right? Like, dude, same band since the eighties. Yeah. Like, yeah. seriously, the exact same band. Um. It's wonderful. One of the band members, I forgot the name, released that black and white Weird Al picture book, like that coffee table book. Oh, really? And it was like he was just like always taking pictures behind the scenes of all this stuff they were doing, like when they were making the Ricky video and the I Love Rock and Roll, Rocky Road. Cool. Like, and so he was just like snapping photos. And so it's like a it's a coffee table book of like all of this like golden behind the scenes, like band Weird Al stuff. And it's really cool. Yeah. I highly recommend it. It's called Weird Al Black and White, maybe. I don't know. We'll we'll put it in the description or something. It was also interesting to see what they... Maybe there was choices behind this that we don't realize, but I thought it was interesting to see what they determined were the songs that mattered up to, the, like, the last song. Yeah, yeah. Like, here's the one that started it. Here's the one right mm-hmm. after that. And then, like, we're going to skip a bunch, and then we're going to end with this one. Yeah. And I was like, that's the one, huh? That's the one that kind of, like, you think re... Like, was important and, like, it's reestablished funny to- you. Right, because Amish Paradise really was like a huge fucking hit, and it mm-hmm. was like it it felt like the return of Weird Al after doing Smells Like Nirvana and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because um, it was like, oh, he's that funny guy or whatever. But as soon as he brought Amish Paradise in, it was just like the perfect time to do a comedy song like that. Well, and Smells Like Nirvana was like that was my first like this is my Weird Al. Yeah, um, but I guess like there probably wasn't as big of a hit as Amish Paradise or Eat It on that album. Right? I agree. Yeah, no, definitely not. I want to say what else was on that one? I mean, it with was Amish really... Paradise. Oh, with that was, was that the so- oh, that was Bad Hair Day. That's Bad Hair Day. Well, Amish Paradise was the one. Yeah, was Gump on that? I want to say maybe Gump. The white yeah. stuff. The white, white stuff. Was... White stuff was on. Uh, that, that was on that Alapalooza. Uh, smells like Teen Spirit or like Nirvana. Smells like Nirvana. Man, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, but yeah, you're right. And I and I also thought it was interesting that they were like, because remember when he was like, I'm gonna write original songs now. I'm done writing parodies. I was hoping they were gonna Dude, play I some. I was so hoping that they were gonna like do all of his original stuff being hit songs. Yep. Dude, I was like ready for that. And then when they did the like, he wrote Eat It. <laughs> and it wasn't based on it wasn't a parody i was yeah. like it took me a while to like be on board with to that. appreciate the joke agree yeah and also be on board because i'm like let's see where they're going with this because are they just trying to avoid mentioning michael jackson are they trying to avoid like even showing a michael jackson are they like what are they doing here and then they mention michael jackson later and i'm like okay so i guess the bit is is that these aren't parodies and the artist parodied him all right that's a fun twist on the biography it was of a parody artist it was a great joke that if you're not on board with the joke you're a little upset that it becomes such a plot point yeah exactly you know what i mean like it's a good joke (laughs) well i get dude matt was telling me that he saw it at like someone's house he was watching it like in the backyard with all these like comedians and stuff and he said it was so disheartening because the Roku kept like buffering. So it was like uh. hard to watch. And then people were like not getting it. They were like, is that really how it happened? Like, oh, I don't God. remember that. Was he really married to Madonna, dude? That's crazy. That's, and it's that's like, oh, man, come on. <laughs> really? And they were like, did Michael Jackson really like 
was beat it fucking a rip off of eat it it's um, like come on guys come on just so you know because i just found this out in the moment you probably already know but in looking up his uh discography to answer some of the questions we just had he released a weird al uh the yank weird the al yankovic story original soundtrack and yeah which has 40 tracks on it's, it. it's yeah there's a lot of like it looks like um, the score stuff the score yeah. but they've got 2002 versions of my below i know re i love rocky yeah. road another one rides the bus like a surgeon in amish paradise yeah <laughs> owen was saying uh, owen listened to them all and he's like they're good they sound like the they sound like different versions of the originals he sounds older yeah exactly <laughs> sounds exactly. a little more tired yeah he doesn't get yeah, that energy's not so there anymore. I I give it, and I'm I could be being, I don't know. I could be uh, being overly critical, or I could be giving it a pass. But I give it like an eight out of ten. I'm not gonna pop it in and watch it a bunch, probably. Yeah. But I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, I just imagine the version with Aaron Paul in it. And Wait, was he originally cast as? Well, because they the tra- the Funny or Die trailer that oh. this is like based on had Aaron Paul playing Weird Al and also had Patton Oswald playing Dr. Demento, which was supposed to happen in the movie, but Patton like hurt himself. Like he got hurt on the set of something oh. and, and like personally was like, I think we should get Rain Wilson. Rain killed it. And dude, I thought he was like the best part of the movie. Maybe <laughs> he was really he's eating good. The, like guacamole and chips <laughs> in the fucking bathroom. And I love how he's like, there's three other jacuzzis in this house. And he's like, no, nope. it's I'm like, good. no matter. Dude, he just keeps giving him reasons to get out of his room. And he's like, no, I'm good. I'm good, man. <laughs> so fun just eating his guacamole with acid in it (laughs) like i love it and i love that like the polka thing was like the polka party (laughs) like yeah it was like they were like metal i guess it was like metal like having an accordion was like playing metal music maybe (laughs) just it was just a dumb again a dumb joke elaborate elaborated family guy style but it was great like i I was just like all these kids want to all these kids secretly want to polka <laughs> yeah and they love it and then when he's yeah. playing the polka they're like their their minds are blown and it you were kind of reminded me of um that that um the nature of uh bigsy bear or briggsy what briggsby briggsby Briggs, briggsby bear where it was like that movie you expected all of the kids to bully him and treat him like shit. <laughs> you always yeah. expected that turn and it never No, they were just good guys. Happened. Yeah. Just good. That, that's what that scene reminded me of is those yeah. two kids like, do it, do it, man. Yeah, you yeah. should do it. And then he does it and they're like, yeah. Dude, I know. I love I do love that. I, I'm sick of seeing like the bullied kid who uses the bully the bullying as like the energy to energize yeah. them into being a better whatever i like the net that in this world everyone's supportive <laughs> of, of like the nerdiest shit i also really liked the factory joke <laughs> oh yeah what do they do in the factory like, you're gonna work <laughs> at uh you're, you should work at the factory what do you even what do you make even at make the there? factory <laughs> but yeah there's a there's a there's in my head i picture aaron paul doing all the dramatic moments and i'm like man maybe that would have worked a little better so you wanted him to go even more i just wanted the dramatic acting to work and i think that all i saw was daniel radcliffe doing an american accent i get that i I get that and it was like either play weird al and do it exactly like weird al because like when weird al was that age he was like wacky and doing like ridiculous shit like he would wear the craziest shit like they, they always had him in the hawaiian shirts or whatever but during those days he would wear like even crazier shit than that mm-hmm. so it was like okay so they didn't go real they didn't go what he was really like they went with like he's a cool badass guy and i and i was like okay well if he's gonna be a cool badass guy then we need to cast an actual cool badass guy and i think aaron paul is an actual cool badass guy not not harry potter i don't think he's badass i think he's good but i don't think he played that role very well i got you but you recommend i do yeah i would i do recommend it because i if you're a casual weird al fan you're gonna love it if you don't know anything about Weird Al, you'll probably enjoy it. 
So it's like it's got it's a good base of entry for Weird Al people who don't know much about Weird Al. And I'd say if you like are a huge fan, it's also got a lot for you mm-hmm. in there also. But yeah, I uh, recommend it. I'm just a little <laughs> a little upset. OK, uh, so we're going to go here in a second, but I want to run something by you, Steve. OK, all right. So uh, the new job over at React where I'm a executive producing, I Hell yeah, make, a, make a bunch of videos and stuff, but I got to come yeah. up with ideas. And there's mm-hmm. a lot, it's, uh, we'd say we, there's a lot of content mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. thrown out of this place, but I lean into what I know. And I made a game and I made a game called Real or Real. OK, this one being Real or Real True Crime. OK, or Real or Real Crime. So, Steve, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to read you a synopsis of something that either happened in real life or is a scene or from, is a, from movie. a movie. And That's you need really to tell good. me if it's a real crime or a real crime. No, I love that. That's very good. R-E-A-L or R-E-E-L. Love it. And I just want to run this one by you. It's in the episode. Okay. Um, far from being edited, I just shot it. But I had a good time. And I fooled some people with many of these. But mm. this is one of my favorite ones. You need to tell me. Okay. Is this a real crime or a real crime? This is great. This is going to get, uh, dude, this is going to get all of the like partner, the people who are uh, with uh, with a partner who loves true crime stuff. Yeah, right. And it, and it's someone who loves movies and you get them on the same team. That's like really exciting. Here it we can go. commiserate between whether it's real or real. This is one of the one that's in the episode. I do not expect to get this by you, but I, I really like it. So imagine that I've given a bunch of real and a bunch of real crime up to this point, and then I read okay. this. And then I read this one. <clears throat> 1975. In what was described as a brazen, random act of ironic, violent malice, a famous English historian was attacked and killed with a broadsword by a man on horseback while filming a documentary on medieval holy wars. Witnesses on the scene watched in horror as the man on horseback swiftly retreated into the English countryside. The victim's wife attempted to stop the bleeding on the scene, but the historian succumbed to his injuries before paramedics could arrive. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> it's so good. And I love the way you read it, too, because you're like, this could be a real person who died. So I'm being respectful. <laughs> The wife tried to save him to no avail. The historian <laughs> died. Dude, also one of the greatest endings to a comedy ever. Because it's just like, how do you end this epic journey? Oh, well, you just have man. the cops come in and like. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about the guy, the scene where the historian who's narrating a scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail is yeah. suddenly <laughs> knifed in the throat. But. <laughs> And just dies. Oh man! <laughs> the poor old historian is murdered. Dude, Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail <laughs> is either a top five or a top three comedy of all. Dude, time. for real, absolutely, like, absolutely. It's the, so f- the neckbeards ruined it with their incessant quoting, but now we're back. We're back around to people ignoring Monty Python, so yep. we can we can go back to enjoying it without so, people going. It's just a flesh wound. Doing this. Uh, this new job, you just have to like fucking shit ideas out all the time. Yeah. But doing making this video makes me want to do because I, I went through their history. I don't think they've done it yet. I'm gonna do like either Gen Z or teenagers watch Monty Python. And wow. The show the whole yeah, or good. like pick the funniest scenes. Yeah, and show exactly. Them. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's the Damn. whole conceit of the channel. So. That's so fucking good. I want to see that. Yeah, but I also don't want to be disheartened by them (laughs) not laughing at it. Dude, last night we did a search for a 2022 meme TikTok compilation. Oh, and we were just like, let's see where like the where the whole like we we did a search on YouTube and we were just watching it. It was like zero comedy. It was like supposed to be funny, but it was like, oh, my God, this isn't funny at all. This is crazy. I felt what, really out of touch. What was the type of humor would you contend? <sighs> like I'm too old to get it now. Like I, I, I don't get what the joke is. Send me the video that you watched and I'll show it to Hayden and I'll let you know if she laughed. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right. All right, Joe. Well, what a lovely podcast with you, my friend. I, th- Elliot I feel like and we had Kevin some good died. energy. Yeah, yeah, they're dead. They're gone. Uh, So it's just Joe and I now. So next episode, we'll just talk about Kevin and Elliot's weird joint funeral. And uh, 
It doesn't make any sense. The families were confused. Um, mm-hmm. But we'll were get they to that. together? We, I mean, I that's that's the thing. Now everyone's asking. So yeah, um, and no one can find Grace. So we don't know what's going yeah. on. So all right, R.I.P. Pleliot. Yeah, Pleliot <laughs> is all is gone. That ship has sailed. <laughs> El- Elvin. Uh, uh, Elievin, Elievin. Oh, guys. Elvin. Yes. Speaking of marketing, we're going to end this with please go to a movie, movie game, Shopify. And yes. Give it for your friends and family for Christmas. Yes. This is time to buy it. Get it. Yes. It's fun. I've yet to have somebody say this game sucks to yes. my face. <laughs> Dude, I was at Brett Register's house and he had a box, he had the movie, movie game on his shelf. Yeah. which was really fun to see at someone's house organically. And then I love that he played it with his family. I know his dad. And look, guys, you'll play it. And let's say you don't want to play it anymore after you're done playing it. It The, the art on it, Casey Landerkin's art is so fucking it's good. So it's so cool. Like, it looks really nice. It's on the just shelf. like having a poster in your house. It really is. Boom. It looks like a cool conversation starter. Mm-hmm. And then you could just pull it out and be like, oh, let me try asking you this. Well, let me see if you can understand we what's got, going on. Dude, we got to get a copy of that over to the Guild Hall. You ever been to Guild Hall? No, but let's do it. It's a bar that has like a bunch of games and you just go and drink and play games with your friends. And it's I'm like, down. yeah, we should go over there with it and see if anybody wants to play. You know, it'd be fun to do like a like a meetup, like come meet us at the Guild Hall and we and can we'll play, play the movie, 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 movie game. game. Yeah, and then we'll leave them a copy there or something. That could be fun. Make it a little trivia night. Yeah, why not? Play some real or real. <laughs> uh, yeah, bring some of that shit in there. That's fun. Yeah. Um, all, right. all right, well, guys, patrons, viewers, listeners, youtube.com slash the Valley Folk, thank you for listening to this podcast and watching it if you did. And... Sometimes we do some Twitch streams over at twitch.tv slash the Valley Folk. If you've made it this far, you should check them out. They're very fun. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And yeah. thank you, Joe. Thank you, sir. And we'll catch you guys next time on the Valley Cast. Bye bye. Scrumper.